Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. So it's another baking video and this week I've had a request to make scones. What I notice about scones when I'm on my travels is that they remind me, obviously here in the UK, scones are cakes. But they're not too sweet because you can make savoury scones, you can make sweet scones, but we tend to make them sweet. When I've been in America, I've noticed that when you have things like chicken and biscuits, to me, the biscuits are like scones. So in the same way that we have biscuits and they're like cookies, I think if you're not sure what a scone is, it reminded me of the biscuits when you have chicken and biscuits, if that makes sense. And when you're looking at the recipe, you may discover that too. But this one's slightly different because instead of putting sugar in, it is a sweet scone, but what we're going to use for the sweetener is actually put the strawberry jam in it. So I'm going to just talk you through very quickly what's going to be in it. So first of all, we'll put our oven on. It's 200 degrees Celsius, and I'll write in the description what the equivalents are. We've got 350 grams of self-raising flour. We have also got a teaspoon of baking powder. We've got 85 grams of butter that we've cubed, and it's not really cold because if it's too cold, it's really hard to mix in. So it's quite soft, but it's not melted. Then we've got 175 mils of milk and we've got two generous tablespoons of jam. This is strawberry jam, but you could use any jam. And if you don't want to use jam and you'd like to use sugar, then I'd say aim for around about 50 grams, but you can basically do it by the tablespoon. So maybe two or three tablespoons. And then what you can do is maybe just try a little bit of the mix and see how it is for you. Then I've just got a cup instead of a cutter because you don't really need a cutter. So that will do the purpose of that. Extra flour for when we're actually using the dough to make the scones before we put it into the oven. And then you're going to keep a tiny little bit of the milk aside because we're going to brush some of that onto them. But if you didn't want to use milk, you could use an egg. And because of that, we're also going to have a brush just to brush that on. But again, you don't need to use a brush. This one's just handy for it too. Also going to use a knife just to initially mix up the mix. And also the knife's handy for cutting the dough and our spoon. So we can now get started. Into our 350 grams of self-raising flour, we're going to put this teaspoon of baking powder. And then what we'll do is give that a quick mix. So you do need to have clean hands for this because your hands will be getting into the mix when you're making the dough. Then what we can do at this stage is we can tip in the cubed butter. And my tip of the day is I, when I'm measuring it out, I sometimes put it on some kitchen roll so that if you're not using greaseproof paper on your baking tray, you can actually use butter residue here or add more to it and you can then instantly work over, you know, when you've got to grease your baking tray. So that's a tip there because then instantly you're cutting down on waste because you've already got that kitchen roll there. Now, before I get my hands in here and start to break this down, I'm just going to warm the milk slightly, but what I'll do is I'll actually put the jam into it. So I will be careful because this can splash up. So just very carefully putting that jam into that milk and then you're just warming it up for about half a minute in the microwave. If you don't have a microwave or you don't want to use one, then just very gently on the hob. And then what will happen is that jam will melt into that milk and then you've got almost like a strawberry milk, but your sweetness is coming from there. And I should also point out before I do that, this is lightly salted butter. The salt balances out the sweetness, but if you don't have salted butter, just a tiny pinch of salt will do the trick. So I'm just going to very quickly give this about half a minute in the microwave just to melt in the jam, dissolve it in, and then you've got your sweetness within your milk. So the milk's been heated up and I'm just giving the jam a little mix into it and it's absolutely fine and it's actually my preference to not completely dissolve it because I like to have those little chunks of jam in there too. So what tends to happen is your milk goes a little bit pink and I like that but I like having the little chunks in and then when it's in the oven anyway when you actually finish the scones and you take them out and they're cooked you don't see chunks of jam in it. They do dissolve in and melt in as it cooks, but your milk should go a little bit pink. Not massively, just a little bit. But I actually have more fun doing this than just popping the sugar in. However, 
you would put your sugar into the mix once you've managed to create your crumb. And by the crumb, what I mean is we're now going to help that butter and the flour melt together. Or it becomes just a nice sort of flaky crumb. You'll know when you see it, especially if you've done it before. Any biscuits tend to be started that way. Don't know if you can see on camera, but that's gone quite pink. But I've got some nice chunks of jam there, so that's what I'm looking for. And I'll just set that aside. Okay, so now what we're going to do is start mixing these together. So we're just very gently getting our little cubes of butter and we're covering them with the flour. And then you're doing just a lovely little movement like this, just a little squeeze and crumb of that butter and eventually this will just become completely mixed. I'm trying to think if there's a beauty move that's similar to it in case this is completely new to you. A massage move. I know that we'll be kneading soon, so that's definitely a massage move, the kneading. But I can't think offhand if we've got a move that's similar. If you can think and I've went blank, then let me know. But this is actually quite a quick thing to do. It's also very relaxing because the flour feels very silky. And then when you're working with the butter and you're just working the two together, it's quite a nice relaxing process. And can you see the texture starting to change? And we're just making sure that it's an even mix. So don't be afraid to keep working it around and get all of that butter worked in. You don't want any lumps. I find baking very relaxing and very therapeutic. But I don't know if anyone agrees with me. Sometimes when you're baking, once you've finished the end product, you don't always feel like eating it. But when someone else is baking, you cannot wait to get stuck in. But I think it also depends what you're making. If anyone's ever made something and you see just how much butter and just how much sugar went into it, sometimes, it's not that it puts you off because it tastes great, but sometimes you think, mm. I know exactly how many calories are in that and it does make you a bit wary. But if you didn't know and you weren't there when it was getting made, you'd be saying, cut me a massive slab of that cake now. So can you see how we're getting there? And it has become a crumb. Yeah, we're definitely there. It also takes on a slightly different colour. It becomes, obviously because of the milk, um, the milk, the butter, because of the butter it becomes a slightly golden yellowy colour. And that's us. So you're just feeling about just to make sure that you don't have any lumps that you've missed. And I think we're pretty good there. I'm happy with that. Right, so now what we're going to do is you can give your hands a little wipe if you want. They are going to get covered again, however, because of the butter, good idea to give them a quick wash. So this is a stage that you would add your sugar in if you wanted to and you would just spoon it in, give it a mix round. But because we are adding the milk with our jam in it, We'll make our well in the middle. I'm going to give it another mix. And it is quite pink now, but I don't know if it shows on camera. I really like, as I say, to have some of those lumps of jam there. So don't be put off. But again, it's your preference. You can keep warming it up until it really melts in. And then I'm going to pour my wet ingredients into the middle. And I need to make sure, because you have to be careful, 
Yes, I need to make sure that I don't have any lumps of jam that I've missed. I've done that before. Sometimes I've poured in my strawberry milk, if you like, because it's a strawberry jam, and then all the jam was sitting at the bottom. The reason that I'm not just continuing to pour it all in is I'm keeping a tiny bit back for the end. You know, when you are just, if you like, putting the glaze on just to make sure they go nice and brown. Right, I'm happy with that. And then you get a knife and you just quickly start working this in. And I can see I've got my nice pink milk. So I'm just working the wet into the dry. Now you could experiment with any jam that you liked or it's really about getting the sweetness in. So however you think you would like to add your sweetness into this mix, that is completely up to you your choice. Doesn't always have to be standard sugar in the form that we know it. So we're working at, and you can turn your bowl if you need to. And you're just catching the dry from the sides and you're catching the dry from underneath because very soon we're going to change how we're working this dough and we're going to use our hands. So I'm just making sure that I'm using the knife to catch the dry. That's us, we're getting there. And if you feel that you've got too wet a mixture, then add a little bit more flour. And if it's too dry a mixture, add a little bit more milk. And you'll get that balance. So there is a chance that we might need a little bit more flour here but I'll be able to tell in a minute but it's no big issue if you do because that's again baking is chemistry but you've always got a little bit of give and take so I'm just going to see I think I may add a touch more flour to that let me just see how it feels yeah I'd like to add a little bit more so just shaking it straight in from the bag and you can judge it. So give that a little mix, see how we go. I have no problems with getting sticky hands. It does not bother me at all. Just make sure they're clean. Ah, they're coming together now. There we go. A little bit more. And remember, we're going to need the flour again because we're going to be dusting our surface. So I'm happy with that. So now we're going to sprinkle some flour onto the surface and move on to the cutting. Okay, so we have floured the board and I've just pressed out the mix because you don't always need a rolling pin. But I have to be honest with you and say this bit is missing because Alan's weird and he eats the raw mix. I'm totally on board with cake balls when you're making a cake, but I think it's weird that he wants to eat raw scone mix. So that was there. So please tell me that that's not right. I think that's weird. <laughs> so that's why you missed a bit because I had to slap someone's hand away so <laughs> we had some actual scone mix that we could put in the oven. So we just got our cup but again if you've got a cutter go for it and then you're just pushing out little scone shapes. If you need to use a knife just to get it out you can. That's roughly the thickness. And then I'm putting them on the baking tray, which I think you can see here. Let me show you. That's how our baking tray is going to look. And I'll show you at the end, obviously, when we're doing that. So you're just trying to get as many scones out of here as you can. But remember, you don't have to do 
a big scone, you can do tiny little scones, that's your choice. And there will be a bit of expansion with your scones, so bear that in mind too because it's self-raising flour. They will get bigger, hopefully, and they could spread a little bit too. So don't have them touching each other on your baking tray because I'm sure everyone at some point has had a baking disaster. I think I've had one mega scone before when I didn't realise that that was going to happen. But how do you know what to do well unless you figure out what doesn't work so well? So you've got to have the disasters in order to have the success. But I have a feeling if I've got any of the scone mix left, I won't need to bother manufacturing one little scone to finish because somebody will eat the raw mix. And then they'll probably feel sick later. Or you'll say, would you like a scone? No, I'm fine, thanks. Not hungry. Why are you not hungry? Because you ate all the raw mix. <laughs> it's good fun winding people up, isn't it? Right, here we go. I reckon we can get maybe another, definitely another two out of this. Definitely two. Possibly, I might be too optimistic going for another two, I don't know. Soon find out. What do we think? Maybe get another one here and then give Dusty Bin the rest? What do you think? Yeah. So I'll probably have an odd number, but that doesn't bother me because <laughs> we'll have that demolished in no time. So yeah, I'll get one more scone out of this. And again, you could use your rolling pin. That is not a problem at all. I did get a compliment on the raw mix. So he said it was very light. So if the raw mix is light, then that's a good thing. Can I get another one or am I pushing it? I can <laughs> am I getting evils? Am I getting evils? See, I think I can get one out of that. And again, the scot in me is saying, you will, you will make another scone out of that. Let's see. What do we think? Yes, you can have those wee bits. <laughs> Angry, not happy. So we'll just move the board out of the way and that's how the baking tray is looking. So I'm just, I've not made an even amount, but I'm not really fussed about that. It's just about making sure that you've got scones, basically. You've got a nice amount of scones. I do sometimes make a smaller version, the little mini ones. They're good fun too. I'm making sure that they're not too close to each other. And as I said, we're then going to brush them with the strawberry milk. So, just a little brush. If not milk, then you can definitely use a beaten egg. But if you're already using the milk, why not just go ahead and keep using that? Got a little bit of fluff there. Actually, I think that was a seed. I wondered what that was. I think it was a seed. So the milk should help them go nice and brown. And then you'll keep an eye on them, but you're talking about 10 minutes in the oven, roughly. But again, everyone's oven is different. The thickness and size of your scones will mean that you could get a different result. So just keep an eye on them and remember, you can just check them with a skewer or a knife and if it comes out clean, they're ready. So these are going in the oven and then we'll see how they look in about 10 minutes time. So here they are, they're out the oven. Some are perfectly formed, some not so much, but that's what I love about home baking. I am never going to be in a bake-off. I'm never going to claim to be anything other than just a good... I say good home baker, I'm not blowing my own trumpet, what I mean is I enjoy it and everyone seems to eat it, so I am happy with that. So, as you know from last time, and it's no different this time, I'm going to take them out and open them up when it's too early, <laughs> but I can't help it. So, let's take one out just now and let's give it a wee cut. So, I made sure that this was actually the one that I checked to make sure it was cooked. 
So it's roasting hot, but I'm sorry, I'm, I can't change. I always want to eat my cakes when they're too hot. See, when you've actually got to wait for them to cool down so you can put an icing on them, that's agony to me. And being left-handed can also be a challenge because I can find that I'm supposed to cut something equally and I don't. So there you go. That's how our scone looks in the middle and it's nice and spongy. It's got the perfect scone texture. And then what we can do is we can place anything you like in there, jam, butter, cream. Some people love to put Nutella in, some will put in um, peanut butter, you name it. There's so many different things that you can do with your scones. So these ones obviously have got the flavour of the strawberry jam in them, but there's nothing to stop you eating them plain. Just eat them as they are. Or again, just basically do whatever it you like just keep it and try to think chocolate some i know some people actually put a biscuit in the middle actually just pick a biscuit some sort of chocolate biscuit and just chuck it in the middle and eat it i think just when it comes to things like this there's no right or wrong but you do get some people you think well that's really weird but yes i have watched someone use a scone almost as a sandwich and have actually put a biscuit in the middle i wouldn't do it but i've witnessed it so that's our strawberry jam scones you can let me know what you think if you've got any recipes or anything that you put into the ingredients, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.